Boss, we've gone over the prisoner transport log you found. Quiet was grabbed by the Soviets and moved to Lamar Hate Palace. They lost a lot of men to her. Can't blame them for wanting payback. But why did she just let herself get captured? I think it is time you knew. Quiet was carrying vocal cord parasites. The English strain, to be precise. The third English pair. Skullface was using her as a vector. An ace in the hole if his assassination plan failed. I knew it, but... Quiet chose not to speak. She told me the situation in Diné. Navajo. The only language to which the parasites do not react. If you found out, she could not remain among you. And yet, she refused the Wolbachia treatment. Why? Because part of her still wanted revenge against you. Revenge against the boss? In order to stay here, she took a vow of eternal silence. But then, that sudden mutation showed this was not enough. As long as the parasites were inside her, she could not predict what might happen. And that's why she took off, sacrificing herself to make sure the English strain died with her? Maybe. Or maybe she only wants to infect the world. Whatever her plan, we can't let her go free. The vocal cord parasites are the last of Skullface's legacy. It's up to us to erase it. Boss, the targets are quiet and the English strain she's carrying. Your objective is to extract her. But if worst comes to worst, she may have to be eliminated. Both her and the parasites. We don't know for sure what Quiet's up to, but we need to secure her ASAP. She's being held at Lamar Hate Palace. Make your way there. I did not choose to be quiet. I wanted to express my feelings to you. If only we shared a common tongue. Vengeance was what drove me to them. The only language left to me, revenge. But the words we shared, no, that was no language at all. That is why I chose the language of gratitude instead and go back to silence. I am quiet. I am the absence of words. Well, Doctor, I have the report on the incident at the quarantine facility. Assuming the vocal cord parasite evolved, I'm sorry, underwent a mutation. The only plausible explanations are exposure to some high concentration mutagen or radiation. As you know, some of the staff at the quarantine facility were infected with the parasites. The Wolbachia prevented them from copulating, but the parasites themselves can't be removed from their host's vocal cords. Once you're infected with... Skullface's parting gift, you're stuck with it. The researchers regularly used X-ray equipment to monitor the parasites in their throats. No problem there, they kept a close eye on the radiation doses. But that equipment didn't just give off X-rays. It was also emitting beta rays. Even though that's unnecessary for the scans. See, beta rays have far worse effects on DNA than X-rays. Meaning the only logical conclusion is that someone added in a beta ray emitter to trigger a mutation. Those beta rays leaked out from inside the equipment. Because the emitter was retrofitted, the shielding was inadequate. And the person who ordered and inspected the equipment was you, Doctor. That makes you the only person with the opportunity to install that emitter. 
So now you're saying I sabotage medical equipment for some wild plan to make the vocal cord parasite kill everyone? Or maybe you thought it'd reveal a way to treat the parasite without using the Wolbachia. With that much to barter, I suppose some people would welcome even a pathetic cur like you. Just stop it! You'd have no shortage of buyers, but most would be happy with just the parasite. You wouldn't need to offer anything else. However, if that buyer already knew about the parasite, they'd also know that by itself, it's no longer the ultimate bargaining chip it once was. To sell to that buyer, you need to throw in a bonus. A way to one-up it. There's only one buyer who'd be after that. <laughs> Emmerich, we record all communications on Mother Base. That includes radio transmissions to and from homemade devices. You've been in frequent contact with people in America. A private biotech company. A client of which is DARPA. And they are connected to Cypher. You made a deal with Cypher. You offered them a new parasite in exchange for your safety. This is the only place in the world where the vocal cord parasite still exists. And you used it as a testing ground. Tried to resurrect their bioweapon. But your plan to obtain the parasite has failed. Your bullshit ends now. And don't think you're leaving here alive. Wait, wait, what are you talking about? Just what do you plan to do? Present the charges against you and render an appropriate punishment. You're gonna put me on trial? <laughs> Call it what you like. What's the meaning of this? Out of here, all of you. Back to your posts. No, hang on. Huey has killed their comrades and interfered with their lives. They've had all they can take. Go! Go! This is insane! You have no evidence whatsoever! You say you're an army free from government. You talk big about being a nation unto yourselves. But, but from the outside, you're just thugs, rebels, a militia, you terrorists, an unhinged threat to society. You're nothing but a, a bunch of psychopaths! You are. So you're not with us? N no! I, I didn't... I thought we were on the same side. That's too bad. I... I didn't... <laughs> Men, you will have justice. But our organization, the boss's organization, is built on order and reason. There will be no lynch mob. So stand down for today. We will gather all the evidence of this man's crimes. And then, he will be tried. Dismissed! What do you think you're doing? Go ahead and execute me. It'll be murder in the eyes of the world. You've lost your minds. Don't you get it? You're seeing phantoms. Just look at that dog. No. You named him D-Dog, but it's obvious anyone could see that's a wolf because you're all a bunch of wild dogs. You wanted to believe he was too, to feel some connection, to fight your loneliness. You wanted something to cling to, to prove you deserve to be alive. You wanted to forget the death, your sins. So you'd cling on to dogs, or, or wolves, or even Big Boss. The boss is the same, isn't he? Every one of you is alone. That's why you suspect your own. I know, because I do the same. I'm one of you, too. Alone. Open your eyes! What you're doing is murder! Plain and simple. All you ever create is war! War and violence can never lead to peace! The R&D team's going to take over Emmerich's work. He may be gone, but it won't affect us one bit. We'll be able to deliver whatever you need just like before. You can depend on that. One other thing. I'm tracking his whereabouts. Nothing to report at the moment, though. Let it go. He's gone. 
The guy's gone. I know. I just want to be sure. Not like I'm losing sleep over this son of a bitch. Open this thing! Huey! Damn it, Huey! Open it now! Please! Let me out! Kill me. Kill me! If only I'd tried to get out sooner. Perhaps I'd have made it. Why didn't I stop the hatch from closing? Even if it meant losing an arm. Distant. But you can hear me, can't you, Joy? I know you can. You're recording all of this. Deep down in some memory board he'll never find. Duplicating it. Burying it under heat. Meaningless code. <laughs> anyway, I guess I can say what needs to be said. I can still do that much. Talk to you. Even if I can't face you. Even if there's a heaven. Even if you're waiting there. I don't deserve to see you again. I don't deserve to love you. I signed up for Zero's plan. Even now that he's halfway to dead, his plan lives on, leeching away at the wall. And it took your strength to make it happen. In using you, I put the world in his palm. Once and for all. Zero, or whoever it is who's taken his name, they found me after the Caribbean. They made me simulate his will, so that even after the body was gone, that will would keep the world turning the way they wanted. I had no choice. They dredged Largo Corsi Bolka. Hold up your phantom. Forced me to revive and modify you. I thought I could bring you back. But in the end, I sold your will to him. Now this po 
heart is just one big shell. A husk. <laughs> Your phantom's no longer here. As for me, everything I touch turns to ashes. I could never make anyone happy. <laughs> see my son again but at least Hal's free from his father's hands me with child can you imagine? I wonder how you took the news. Were you jealous? I knew what I was doing. If I could pass your will onto a child I carried, my genes, your beam, a father would be. Irrelevant. If I did that, that child would be ours. couldn't see through the dream. The false you I created. I only wanted to pass your will on to the next generation. Zero took it away. And now I haven't just lost you. I've lost my forgive the mother who couldn't protect you the one who let them take it all away from us oh. Oh. there's still hope you the one he took He'll never break your will. The will to make this world the way you saw it could be. I buried code. Approaching. Just to be sure. Inside of you, there is an egg. And when someone finds it, when they crack it, There'll be nothing left to stop you. The world you envisioned will become a reality. Shumri. Never be afraid. Whatever happens out there, she'll be watching over you. The system, the framework for the world, will protect you. You don't need me. You just need to be strong enough. 
Thank you, Code Talker. Your pinpointing the cause of the vocal cord parasites mutation enabled us to purge an enemy from Mother Base. You mean that scientist? Yeah, I was convinced he betrayed us, but I was wrong. He was never on our side to begin with, so ultimately there was no traitor among us. And yet I made everyone distrustful with my talk of spies, the end result being men turning on each other in the laboratory. You must not blame yourself. They were all infected with the mutated strain. The outcome would have been the same. You know, we defeated Skullface, but it didn't lessen our pain. It's a pain we'll never be rid of. I see that now, but I thought I could burn it away. In the end, all I burned was our own men. Infectious diseases, parasites. Without such foreign enemies, the immune system will start attacking the body, developing allergies and autoimmune diseases. The same is true of organizations. You're right. But I do not deserve to rebuke you. My desire to retaliate against the English language is what attracted me to the vocal cord parasites in the first place. Had it not been for that, I would never have been used by Skullface. We both allowed revenge to crawl into our minds and lay its eggs. Sahelanthropus will unleash that thirst unto the future. How long are we going to be tormented by what he left behind? There is no choice but to live with that pain. Be symbiotic with our vengeful nature. Whatever we do, we must not allow that thirst for revenge to control us. I was looking at things wrong. What do you mean? All of you. Until now, I had thought of your organization, Diamond Dogs, as a superorganism. Uh, you'll have to explain that one. The term refers to a unit of eusocial insects like ants or bees. While made up of many individuals, they behave as though they are one organism with the queen as their nerve center. The close ties you share here reminded me of that. Though the boss's efforts do pull us all together. I was not finished. I'm speaking in terms of homogeneity. You come from all walks of life, do you not? Many races and tongues, talents and pasts, complementing each other, influencing each other making Diamond Dogs the unique group that it is. Of course. We have no use for mindless drones around here. Is that so? Then perhaps an organization like yours is a truer superorganism than the ants and bees. Meaning? Most organisms adapt to their environment by coexisting with other species. Take the cow, for instance. It's rumen. The first stomach contains an incredible number of bacteria which digest the food it has consumed. 
Without their help, the cow could not break down the fiber ring grasses. The cow has to outsource its means of survival to them. You don't say. Man is the same. Some 100 trillion bacteria live inside the human intestines. Without the bacteria, they could not function properly. And it does not stop there. The stomach, the mouth, the skin. Even the placenta contains bacteria that coexist with us. The same is true of parasites. In fact, the human immune system has evolved based on parasites being a part of it. Without them, the immune system can run amok and even damage other parts of the body. This is all very interesting, but what does it have to do with diamond dogs? A harmonious superorganism is made up not of a group of homogeneous individuals, but of diverse individuals that complement each other. That is what I saw in your group here. Then it occurred to me that man is a superorganism. Man's phenotype is not determined solely by his genetics. Some say if you mapped the genomes of all bacteria in the human body, the result would be over 100 times bigger than the human genome. The sum of man's genome and those of the organisms he coexists with, call it a metagenome, creates the superorganism we know as a human being. Well, now that's quite a leap. You think so? Then try a broader perspective. If our world were a human body, you would be parasites. You make a living by doing the dirty work that the world powers cannot handle themselves. From their perspective, you are likely a nuisance. But without you, pus would build up around the world, and autotoxemia, self-poisoning, would follow. The world needs your kind. Thank goodness for that. Skullface forced me to turn parasites into weapons. Creatures with which we are supposed to coexist Meanwhile, that foundation I worked with focused solely on the human genome, apparently thinking that manipulating it would get them whatever new form they want. Both ways are mistakes. Neither is a true superorganism. I am Dine. By speaking with those living inside me, we enhance one another and enjoy harmonious growth. Such was the original purpose of my research. You have made me remember this. <laughs> well, it's an honor. You can travel the world, but you won't find another place like this. If the whole world was like this base, I think the peoples of the world would bid farewell to fighting for good. Maybe that's what the boss wanted in the end.